and welcome back to my channel. I am here with my February plan with me, which is a little bit later than normal, just scheduling kind of got away from me, but here you go. We are finally ready to set up February. So let's take a look first, as always, at January. I'm actually gonna just grab my bullet journal out of my cover. Oops. When I set up the month, I tend to like to do it with just having my notebook on the table because then it's a little bit of a flatter surface to write on. I just save my whoops, elastic back here so it doesn't get caught. So let's take a peek. I'll give you a flip through of the front of bullet journal stuff as well since you guys haven't seen it since it was kind of fully set up. So I do have a video coming for you guys on my 2019 top five goals, so I'm not gonna go into that at all today. Um, but you'll see that later. I have my weekly reading plan for the Bullet Journal Method book club, and full disclosure, I did the first week and I have not had time to do the next one. If you can kind of see over here, I X'd off one and like the rest of them, not even a little bit. Then I have my index all set up. So thankfully, in the official bullet journal, there are two full spreads of index because I'm already down to the bottom of the first page and this is like just front of Bujo stuff, goal setting in January. So I'm probably going to need all these pages. Got my Calendex and Future Log. 54321 goals. I will do a video on this at some point. It's coming. Just <laughs> things have been busy. Savings and Finances. Calendex Carryover. So you can see most of these spreads have something on them. Some of them, for example, don't. I set them up so that if and when I need them, I can easily find them at the front of my bullet journal. But for example, the waiting for, I don't really purchase a lot of stuff online and so I don't use it that much. This might be one to think about not doing in the future actually, just because I don't really use it that much. Got my YouTube calendar with a couple of videos pre-planned out. Hopefully I can make those happen. YouTube and Instagram trackers, YouTube workflow, ideas of stuff to film and ideas for series to film, which I'm actually super excited about both of these. I just need to actually have a solid chunk of time to sit down and film a bunch of videos so that I have some good continuity between, between the episodes. Library loans tracker and K-drama tracker. I'm actually still finishing up a tracker in my old bullet journal, which is why there's nothing on here. Also, haven't been watching as much TV or trying not to because I'm trying to get other stuff done. It's, it's going okay. <laughs> so January. All right, so this was my kind of copper and gray month and I really only did copper in my front, like my monthly setup. Everything for my weeklies is all in gray and I'm actually kind of in love with it. Um, so yeah, I have this little quote and intro page. I've got my monthly log. So you can see I have a couple of things that I fill in in my color code. And then I have a couple of things. I try to do a little bit of like just kind of in general what I did that day. A lot of times it's going to be something related to my mood. So if I had like a really rough day or a really good day, a lot of times I'll write that down. Or if it was like a really productive day or I did something that had like been on my list for a while, I try and put that on here. But again, I don't do a ton on here because I do have my some lines a day. I do journal on my dailies. So like it's not really necessary, but this is just at a glance. I like to have, you know, like one big highlight from the day, if you will. I actually have something for February and I didn't even put the little event circle next to it. Like, oops. So tasks for February, I decided to do... Or Oh my gosh. For January, I decided to pick five tasks from my brain dump, which you'll see in a couple of pages, that I really, really wanted to focus on getting done this month. So you can see I've actually finished two and a half of them, which is awesome. This one that is planning my February holidays, I actually am kind of waiting on because I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen, but it's basically going to be and at home like I'm actually not going to travel for the February holidays but I'm just not sure yet based on like what's going to happen if I'm going to be only working on projects or if I'm actually going to move or like what exactly am I going to do so I kind of need to wait on that so this will happen it just I, I don't have enough information yet to make plans. Um, this one I have to do. I, like, I absolutely have to do it and I've gotten part of the way through here honestly if I don't finish all of it this month like it was too big of a project for this month and in like originally I actually had only meant to do 
organizing digital documents and I've since added on that I wanted to organize things in my Google Drive and scan documents, but my Google Drive is actually organized for the most part and I don't have time to scan documents right now, so like this one's actually kind of done. So anyway, so this I found really helpful where instead of having like a focus for the week, I have the, these focus tasks for the month kind of thing, and then I do have things that come up week to week, but this has been really good for helping me get some of those like really annoying things I've been putting off done, like finally. So then we have trackers. Let me move my bookmark. So the tracker is going. Um, pretty well, I would say. So I'm still working on this upper section, but I actually am getting better, which is good. I think like that was kind of the point of this experiment was to see if having these weekly and monthly level ones, which are mostly related to cleaning and exercise, actually on my monthly tracker, which I do look at every day, if that would help me accomplish them more than if I had just left them in my home bullet journal on like a yearly tracker spread because obviously I wasn't looking at it in there. My morning routine is pretty good, like I don't skip it very often. You'll see every once in a while I skip my morning skincare and that's just like uh, usually on the weekend, sometimes I just don't do it, but then I try and do it in the evening most of the time. I have been pretty good about my evening skincare and even on days where I just really don't want to do anything, I do kind of like the absolute bare minimum, which is, I feel, better than nothing. So I still have to do the review at the end of the month, but you'll see I still have like a week and a half left, so this is going on pretty well. I've got my reading tracker. I've actually already hit my book goal for the month, so I've already read five books and it, so I'm filming on the 22nd. So I've still got like a week and a bit left to go, so I might be able to fit in a sixth book. We'll see. Next, I've got my gratitude, which I was doing gratitude in fountain pen, and I was just kind of, I didn't want to use fountain pen. It's a little bit fussier, and I just really wanted to be able to kind of like write and go and not have to wait for it to dry. So I've actually been using a gray gel pen, which you guys have seen. I also have been using it as, um, to do my journaling on my dailies, again, instead of fountain pen. So this is a Uniball Signo DX in a 0.38 like point and it is just like a nice gray pen honestly I wish that I had more colors of gray gel pens because I'm obsessed with this thing it is amazing um, I just like you guys know my obsession with gray like yeah, of course I would love a gray gel pen so I've just been doing gratitude in my normal handwriting I'm not doing cursive like honestly was just I wanted to do gratitude but I didn't want it to be fussy at all so it's just my normal everyday handwriting in gel pen like once I'm done I can flip the page and go back to doing what I need to do then I've got my brain dump which you can see is full I literally have no more space to add things on I have been doing some things maybe not as much as I would have liked it's been kind of a hectic month like coming back from the holidays but like things are going like it's good and I really do like having this over here because I look at it when I have extra time and I'm like oh what what can I work on I do take a look at this but it's not as overwhelming to see this next to my monthly and think oh my god I have to do all of these things this month like no these are things that just need to get done in the next few months or things that I like want to work on but it really kind of takes the pressure off if I don't have it next to my monthly and I just have those few tasks that I'm focusing on so that has been really nice I've got my quarterly goals which I'm still like I need to kind of still fill in a bit I don't want to go overboard just because in certain quarters I won't have time to do as many things but at least I've got kind of an idea and again I'm gonna do a, a video on this at some point this is gonna be this is gonna be a theme for a while guys <laughs> So weeklies. So obviously gray was my theme I have been using. So my everyday writer is this g -Tech C. It's a Pilot Mica 0.4. So this is my everyday writer. And then I've been using a variety of gray gel pens for doing my setup. And then all of my lettering I've actually been using a gray Pentel sign pen just because it's a lot like finer and it doesn't take up as much space so I've just been using that to do like my Monday Tuesday kind of thing um, and I've just kind of been alternating I have used probably four or five different gray Tombos throughout this and I honestly don't even remember I think like N75, N65, N55 I feel like those are the top three that I've been using but I honestly just kind of like pick it out and like oh these look nice together let's go so one page weekly as always I've got my 
tasks and then at the end of the day once I'm done or sometimes the next morning just depending on timing I go in and I do a little bit of journaling so that has been going along this was the carryover from my post trip task list from my last bullet journal that at the end of the holidays I wanted to just have this list front and center in my new bullet journal so I just copied that over and you'll see that I've done the little check mark at the bottom which means that I'm officially done with this spread even though some of it's not fully crossed off like it's either it's no longer relevant or it's been migrated to a different dedicated collection as in the case of grading. I have my project planning spreads, I guess, if you will, for my top five goals for 2019. And again, I do have a video coming on this, so you can just see what they are, but I'll explain them later. More dailies. As you can see, I have my mini collections, as I often do. And yeah, it's just been kind of going along. So one thing that I really like to do, and I don't think I've ever mentioned this before, is, for example, uh, like for grading, I'll have the task box for the grading, but a lot of times it's a multi-step thing. And so I actually will just do, um, so in the case of grading, I usually will just write the class because I know there's usually just that like one assignment for that class that I need to grade or what have you. And so I just make a little note over here and when I finish it, I cross it off. Once I finished all of them, I can cross off the task. I do the same thing with my YouTube because often I will try and film, like find a good, like solid couple of hours where I can film a few videos. And then I just write down how many videos I've got filmed, which means, okay, how, that's how many videos I need to edit. That's how many I need to upload and prep. And so this just kind of makes it, I see that I'm making progress but I only have to take up one line for the particular task. For things that are like m bigger projects and like require a lot more steps, obviously this wouldn't necessarily work, but for littler, littler things that are still kind of multi-step, I found that this is really helpful for me and it gives me a sense of accomplishment, even if I haven't quite finished everything. So back to dailies. Lots and lots of dailies, lots of journaling. So this is one where I had three mini collections and you'll see I actually have a tab on here because I'm still working on grading and my Christmas thank yous. I'm super behind, I know. But because I had a lot of space, I actually was in the mood to do a bunch of journaling. So this is all journaling for Sunday. So I kind of adapt the amount that I journal based on space. And also I know typically that on the weekend, I'm going to journal more than during the week. I have more time. A lot of times it's like reflection on like what's happened during the week or things that are on my mind. So I tend to save my like bigger, I tend to save my bigger journaling spaces for the end of the weekend. Okay, keeping on. For example, this was a Friday that I had a lot of journaling that I wanted to do. So I just went ahead and took that space and I kind of took less space for Saturday and Sunday. And you'll notice that, so this was actually last week. So you'll notice that I only have one mini collection. So I actually still have a bunch of space. So I had almost a full page of journaling for both Saturday and Sunday. This is a little floor plan of the apartment that I'm looking at. We'll keep you guys posted as to whether it's going to happen or not. And we're up to this week. So I have done my journaling for yesterday. I've got my task list set up for Tuesday. So we are good to go. And I basically have then counted out the number of pages I'm going to need for the end of January. So I've been averaging about three spreads per week. So one page for weeklies and then five pages for dailies, however that pans out. Um, and because the end of January kind of, or because next week, so this week is all in January, but next week actually splits four days in January, three in February, I decide to put it with January because my birthday is that week and I don't really want my birthday to be like shuffled into February So I want it to like still be in January So I have this week and next week that I'm gonna do in January and then we have February so I've got for this week and I've got for next week Oops, and I have put my little sticky note right here for February So let's take a look at my February setup and my color scheme. Okay, so February Things are not really going to change. For one thing, I am kind of super busy right now, so I have found a monthly setup that seems to work. I don't really want to mess around with it. I don't really have 
kind of the time to dedicate to figuring out if there are things that aren't working as well. So I'm just going to kind of leave it as is for right now since it is working. So I will have my intro page, my log, my top five tasks, tracker and reading, gratitude, and my brain dump. I've chosen my quote for February. So I didn't really care for the February quotes and a couple of the ones that I actually liked, I know that I've done for previous Februarys. So I actually ended up looking for winter quotes. So these are winter quotes from Goodreads and I just picked one that I liked. So this one is, winter is the time for comfort, for good food and warmth, for the touch of a friendly hand and for a talk beside the fire. It is the time for home. And I thought that was really fitting because one, like I'm a super duper homebody. I love being at home. I love having like a really cozy space at home. And two, I'm like thinking about moving. And so this idea of like finding my next home just really spoke to me. So that's why that's my quote. Then I have my color scheme and this was actually, I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. So this was actually recommended by Letters from the Rock. So I had no idea what I wanted to do for my color scheme for February because I'm actually so in love with the gray that I did for January that I just like couldn't seem to think of a different color that I actually wanted to do. So I posted it on Instagram and I said, hey, help me out, like help me choose a color scheme. And I saw a bunch of ones, like there were a ton that were like, oh, do like lavender or red or pink or all this. And I was like, those are nice. And then I saw this one that just was amazing. So it actually was this suggestion. Letters from the Rock said, how about sage, honey, and gray for St. Brigid, Bridget, Bridget Day? I'm sorry, I probably didn't pronounce that right. It's the unofficial start of spring. So like one, I love spring. Spring is awesome. And two, I love like I, I used to do sage kind of a lot more frequently and I feel like I haven't done it in a while. So that like particular one, there were a ton of great suggestions, but that one just like kind of stuck with me. So I was like, you know what, we're gonna do that. So what I have is I'm gonna keep my Pentel sign pen because I really like this for doing my headers. It just, it's a nice like fine brush pen. So it works really well. I've chosen one gray. So I do still have some gray. I'm using N55 and then I have my sage. So 312 and I kind of had a little bit of an issue finding a honey, but I think this one's going to work. Like I, I kind of like this look. So I'm going to use N46 and then as always, I have my everyday writer and I've pulled out my two other gray pens. So I've got my gray Statler and my gray gel pen. I just tend to use those for various things. So that is going to be my color scheme for today and, or for today, for February. And I'm actually really excited. I still get to keep my gray, but like incorporate a little bit of color. So I think this is going to be good. So that is my pre-plan setup. So in here, I actually did a little bit less sort of pre-planning than I usually do. I do have a couple of pen mark or pencil marks, not pen marks, pen pencil marks here for my quote. And I actually am, because it's kind of a long one, I'm actually just going to write it in my everyday handwriting with the gray gel pen, like you guys will see. But um, I have for February, I have just the start and end for my monthly log. And I've got pencil marks for my tracker because that's the one that's kind of the takes the most time to set up, but otherwise nothing else. So that is all I've got for my pre-planning. Let's go ahead and time lapse and I will see you guys at the end and we'll talk, chat about how it all went.
Okay, so this is February. I actually really love this color scheme. I think that, I don't know, I just, I really like the look of it and I feel like it's gonna be a really calming set of colors for February. So I have my quote over here and sort of at the last second I was like, oh, I'm gonna accent a couple of things. So I did most of the quote in this gray gel pen and then I did a couple of accent letters and the word home in the gray Statler just to kind of make them stand out a little more. And I have to say that all things considered, I'm really pleased with how centered this is because I didn't really do anything more than like find the center of the page. I think if I had done home and gray gel pen, it actually would have been like perfectly centered. But as it is, I like how it has this sort of like end brackets, if you will. So I like how that came out and I love this quote. So just February 2019. And again, I like how just this look like this is probably one of the nicest looking intro pages, like intro spreads that I think I've done in a while in terms of just like everything being spaced out really nicely. Like who knows, it happens sometimes. Then I have my monthly log. So I did for a lot of these spreads sort of alternate between the sort of like honey yellow and the sage and then with accents of Febu of February, just looked at this and said February, um, accents of gray and like kind of interspersed. So yeah, this is basically just the same as always. I have my tracker, which you'll notice for the first time I did just straight by hand. I honestly, I pulled out my ruler and I just decided I didn't feel like dealing with it because it goes so much faster. It feels like if I just kind of do it by hand. So it's got a little bit messy look, a little bit of wonky lines, but like it is what it is. Um, so yeah, this honestly has not changed in the slightest, I have the exact same things that I'm actually tracking, basically the same things in my skincare key and the other key I have sort of added in for cleaning. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but in January for cleaning, I have these little indicators that I do over here and I basically just will However many I do, I'll just kind of try and squish them all into the box, but it's basically D for dust, S for sweep, W for Swiffer, and B for cleaning the bathroom. So I've just added those in there so I don't forget what those little notations are um, in the future. Space for a review. This one is a little bit smaller just because since February is only 28 days, I just gave myself a little bit more room in the reading tracker rather than like having empty lines or whatever. So that just means that my review is a couple of boxes shorter and I think it'll be fine. Reading tracker, as always, same goal. Basically every single month I will have the goal of reading five books, which is nice. I don't have to do any sort of math. I just know straight off the bat. Then I have my gratitude and brain dump and I actually love the look of this, like having the one brush lettered and then the rest in just like mono cursive. I think it looks really cool. And if we're being perfectly honest, I'm probably going to keep the same two pens that I've been using in January. So I will probably do all of my like daily tasks and stuff in this black pen and any gratitude and journaling in this gray pen because I just really like the look of that. But yeah, that is February. This one was nice and short and sweet. It was honestly just the same exact setup as what I did in January so there was a lot less to kind of go through and think about which was really nice for me because honestly I just needed to like get it done get it set up and yeah I have to say I love love the color scheme so thank you so much letters from the rock I don't know if you watch my videos um but if you do thank you very much for the color suggestion I will definitely mention it on Instagram as well because I am in love with this particular look I think it looks really really cool so yeah, I hope you guys have a great end of January. I hope you have fun setting up February and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Hey guys, so if you've made it all the way to the end of this video and are actually watching my end screen and you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you would. There's a little button right there for you to do it. And if you're interested in watching some more of my videos, I have links to two of my older videos off to the left there so you can check those out if you would like to and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.